Hi. Recently, Josh sent me an email and asked me several great questions. So I figured that this will be the easiest way to answer them. And the first of Josh's questions was, what software do I use and why? Uh, this is a neat topic, I must say, and I'm using two different softwares right now. The first one is RFM by a company called Bluebell, and the second is Femap with NX Nastron, and this is produced in Siemens. Uh, I'm using two softwares simply because there are different things I use them for. Uh, if you're a mechanical engineer, this might be somewhat new because you have never seen one of those. And that is that RFM is a great tool, especially if you deal with beam elements. If you have huge steel structures, for instance, made from hot rolled cross sections or, or cold from, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, actually, the quote unquote civil engineering stuff. Uh, it, the software are simpler and the uh, solvers don't have as much possibilities as the big machines like Nastron. However, uh, they have a lot of automated tools that are simply great. I mean, like, you don't have to extract uh, cross sections and uh, cross section forces or whatever. Uh, you can simply press calculate and it will be done according to a code of your, code of your choice. So, a lot of things are automated and among the programs for beams for civil engineering let's call it this way i think there are a few good names that uh, one can mention um, in poland very popular is robot which is autodesk software i don't think they do it anymore they, they changed the name i think um, i'm not the big fan of this program i used it before never really liked it but it's very popular so there must be something in it maybe it's a personal choice even though i i think that there are better choices uh, then you can use rfm which i do and i'm i'm very happy with that uh, and uh, there there is also sophistic which is a bit com on the complicated end when it comes to user interface but i think they are changing this right now uh, but it has more calculation capabilities, not as much as the more robust solvers, but still it's a bit more advanced. So there is something. Uh, and there are, of course, plenty others like Sub2000, for instance. Uh, but to be fair, I haven't seen them, so it's hard to tell anything about them. I mean, like I've seen Sub on several designs. I had to verify that someone did them in Sub. This is all I know about the software. So it's it's hard to be specific. Uh, when it comes to normal FEA, let's call it this way, the robust solvers that allow you for far more. Uh, of course, I'm using Finap with Phoenix Nastron, so Nastron is nice. There is also AutoCAD Nastron right now, which was bought a few years back, uh, but it's not as robust as Phoenix Nastron, I think, at least not yet. Um, there is also Patron, and of course, Abacus Analysis. I mean, come on, right? Uh, the only issue I have with Abacus and Nancy's is the price. And uh, yeah, that, <laughs> that's actually a big if. Um, uh, there is also console, but I, I only see their web page. It's very nice, by the way. Uh, and of course, uh, there are a lot of open source or free cloud computing softwares that you can try, like SimScale or uh, Codaster. Uh, which is completely open source, at least it was some time ago. So, um, there are plenty of choices. With all that being said, I have made my choice uh, in a very complex way, I think. Uh, and this is because I was making this choice uh, during a very long period of time. Like all students in Poland, I started with robot. But even during studies, I didn't enjoy that. Even though it gave certain possibilities, I simply didn't feel that the software is for me. And uh, during internship, in summer, I went to work for a big company in Germany, and they were using RFM. And this is where I learned that, wow, this is a actually nice soft. So the, the first choice was, I was simply searching for a program that was nicely looking, 
easy to use and don't frustrate me. And Erfan is definitely called that. On another hand, right now, if I would have to choose the software again, I would do it a bit differently. Uh, I would go to LinkedIn, find at least 300 people that work in an industry that I'm interested in. This could be offshore structures, structural steel, whatever. I will reach out to them and ask them what software do they use in their work in my country or in Europe or wherever you want to work. So in your region of interest, let's call it this way. And you will notice that in several countries, people use different software to solve different problems, which is obvious, Like, uh, to, or even use different so software to solve the same problems. There, there are many solutions, obviously. So if you can afford this software, I, was, I would learn the most popular one. Of course, there is a slight risk that you will find that the most popular software kind of sucks, like robot. Uh, but uh, this is relatively low. I mean, most likely people are using certain software simply because they always use it. It doesn't mean that it's wrong, but it doesn't have to be the best. But what you get is that you actually learn software for FEA that is used in your industry. So when you will search for a job, this is a huge advantage. Sure. I've changed softwares throughout the history of my career several times. And each next time you learn faster and faster, simply because most of what is important sits in your head. It's the understanding of FEA, what should you calculate, what to pay attention to, how to model this or that. Software doesn't change that at all. On the other hand, when you learn software, you kind of learn a lot of uh, tricks, and gimmicks that you simply know that in this particular software package you can click this or do this shortcut, whatever, and in time you are doing this more efficiently. And when you switch software to another one, you need to learn those tricks once more, and it usually takes some time. So if you go to a company and say, no, no, I'm using your software already for several years and I'm proficient at it, I cannot imagine this is a bad thing, right? So. Try to, when you want to select software, not only search for price and for what it can do, which, which are two pretty obvious stuff, right? But also try to learn what people in your industry, in your country or zone of interest use as a software. And if you can afford it, try to use that one, because then it will be easier for you in the future. When it comes to parameters, so what I would like my software to have, to be able to calculate, I would strongly divide programs between those for beam elements, and let's call it civil engineering, and those that do general purpose FEA. <laughs> so when it comes to civil engineering software, I usually do steel design, but of course I would like my program to calculate concrete structures, wood and glass and whatever else, simply because maybe somewhere along the way there will be something I need to calculate. So it's at least good to be able to even not have that today to buy an additional module that does it later. Because you don't have to buy everything at once, especially since if you are starting a company, for instance, this would be a huge cost. But having the possibility is great, because otherwise, if the opportunity appears, you will simply have to ignore it or buy a completely different software package, which is always more expensive choice. So, in the civil engineering stuff, I would search for linear and nonlinear geometry. This is obvious, more or less. It would definitely have to calculate linear bifurcation on it. So, linear buckling. It would have to be able to calculate my stuff according to the code of my choice. To me, that would be Euro code, but actually this is the cheaper part. I mean, um, a lot of software allows you to calculate beams according to enormous amount of codes, and you simply select which one. But what I would also check there is if the dialogues are user-friendly. In, in static, this is of course important, but not as much as in, in code design, because you need to provide a lot of information for the code design that is additional to static mobile, like buckling lengths, for instance. And the way you do it 
can mean that it will take you a lot of time or only a bit of time. And <laughs> this is obviously a big difference. So I would, I would check if the dialogues are user friendly. And even though we are talking about the beam models, I would like my software to be able to calculate plates and in the best case scenario to even use nonlinear material in plates, even a simplified version. This nonlinear material part, I could resign from it if the opportunity was good and the software was very popular. This is not like the biggest issue, uh, but it will help you to progress to more advanced FEA later, because you will firstly build beam models, then you will try to uh, model the I don't know, connections more accurately using shell elements and, and then you will kind of like progress toward doing more complex analysis. So having uh, the plates is actually pretty neat, especially since you can do um, stress analysis very accurately in places normally you wouldn't be able to do in beam model. So, so this is a huge advantage. And this more or less close the list of what I would like to have in a civil engineering software. In FEA, oh, this strongly depends on what you want to do. I assume that you want to do steel structures or something about, like that, simply because I, I do it and this is easy for me to tell what actually is required, simply because um, I know what I'm using. So you definitely need a linear and nonlinear solver, which is obvious. And of course, nonlinear material with several different models because you want to expand and learn. Uh, you want to have contact. So this means three nonlinearities, nonlinear geometry, material and contact. And you want to be able to use them at the same time. <laughs> this is tricky, you know, because software will always tell you that they have the three. But you would like to use them in the same model, in the same time, in the same analysis run. And this is not always the case, so it's good to check that. Uh, on the solution end, I would expect to have an arc length method uh, implemented. This is an algorithm from 70s, so it's, it's pretty old. I, I, I don't even think that it's very relevant if this is Chris Field or Modified Weeks or whatever else, as long as, as there is an arc length. You can do a lot of cool stability analysis, which I do. So this would be like the tool of choice. And even if I wouldn't buy it at the beginning, I would definitely make sure that my software can have implicit and explicit solver for dynamics. Um, simply because this is, again, a natural progression. You start from beam models, you then use plates to do stress analysis, then you use nonlinear materials in those, then you build a whole model, then you do, you know, contact and stuff, and then you want to do explicit crash test or whatever, right? So even if you don't buy them at the first go, because explicit solver can be expensive, uh, at least you want to have a chance to buy it in the future. So you don't have a grant to change software solution. Um, if I would have to buy one, so I would have like resources to only buy one software, I would go with civil engineering one simply because it would be easier to earn money from it. And then when I, you know, earn a lot or enough, at least <laughs> I can, I can buy the, the new solution. But if you're in mechanical engineering, then the general purpose of EA would be more advice. Uh, just bear in mind that I've trained at least several mechanical engineers that did beam models in Abacus or Nastran or ANSYS. And this like breaks my heart. This is so much work you need to do in post-processing to actually verify anything. While there are ready software packages that simply does this for you with four clicks. So, uh, yeah, I think this is more or less all when it comes to FEA software. If you have any questions, be sure to leave your comment below and tell me if you like what I do here. And uh, yeah, see you next time.